Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Jesus said, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We light the Advent candle of peace. be seated. Please join me now in reading together the prayers for forgiveness found printed in your bulletin. Forgive us, God. We have done things that we regret having done, and we have failed to be the kind of people you know we have it in us to become. Empower us who came to give us second birth to begin again, to start anew, to follow your pathway of peace. God is full of grace and full of love and full of peace. And God wants our sins to be as far from us as the East is from the West. Friends in Christ, know that you are forgiven. Rest assured and be at peace. Amen. peace is a gift, a gift for us to share with each other, a gift to celebrate. May that peace fill you, fill the space in between you. The peace of Christ be with you. We continue to exchange the signs of the peace like this, or like this, or maybe if you're sitting in the same row, a little fist bump. And we invite the children to come to Sunday school.
Good morning. Welcome to Central Presbyterian Church. We welcome those who gather here in the sanctuary, and we welcome those who are joining us by broadcast on HGTV, as well as those who are joining the Facebook stream and those who will be watching later in the week. We hope that you also feel a part of our community of faith and a connection to God during this time of worship. There are several announcements I want to bring to your attention. First of all, we invite you, after this worship service ends, to come over to the North Classroom, uh, where Dr. Charity Wicks and I will be um, uh, co-teaching a two-part uh, series on the music of Advent and Christmas. That's over in the North Classroom Live. For those who'd like to join by Zoom, there is a Zoom link on the website, and you can uh, join us by Zoom if you would prefer. Uh, also, uh, please note that this evening there is a wave service at 5 p.m. in the auditorium. Uh, this wave service is um, called a Blue Christmas Service. It's a service uh, during the holidays where we acknowledge that they aren't always the merriest of times for everyone and maybe not the merriest of times for a part of each of us. And so uh, we invite you to come uh, to the wave service this evening to be together and to hold uh, those um, feelings in your heart um, together. Finally, I, I want to encourage you to uh, help us out by filling out a copy of the United States Congregational Vitality Survey, uh, which you should have been handed on your way in. Uh, we'd really like to encourage you to fill that out uh, today and leave it with us in the collection boxes before you go. Uh, this is an important instrument that the session will be using as we start to think about uh, what the future might look like here at Central Church on the other side of this pandemic. All your responses are completely confidential. We won't be doing the analysis, but the organization that does a survey will be getting the original copies of the survey and analyzing them. You only need to fill it out once. If you could do that today uh, while we're in worship, um, or we we'll hope to end early. You could linger. It should take you about 10 or 15 minutes to fill out. Um, you want to color in those uh, dots, uh, not put an X or a check mark, but color them all in because they'll go through a computer. You remember that drill from school, right? Number two pencils fill in the block completely. Um, but we hope that you'll do that. And you can also take it online. There is an online version. Uh, you got the link to that online version in the Friday email, and you will again. Uh, so either place, we really hope that everybody will help us out as we start to think about the future by filling out uh, one of these surveys. Um, and you only have to take it once. So please um, help us out with that. We appreciate it. And that completes our announcements uh, for this morning. And um, our scripture lesson is um, taken from the Gospel of Luke in the third chapter. I'm beginning to read at the first verse, listen and hear God's word. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. May God bless to our understanding this reading of God's holy word, and to God's name be glory and praise. Amen. Philip Brooks was exhausted by life and embittered. He had served as a pastor of a church in Philadelphia for only six years, but what a six years it had been. You see, Phillips Brooks had been ordained to the ministry in 1859, and for those of you who know your history dates, that meant that he had spent 
almost his entire time those first six years serving a church during the Civil War. And the longer that war went on, the more he found himself serving a congregation that was continually in the process of mourning. They were weighed down by grief over the deaths of husbands and sons and neighbors and friends. And when the war finally ended in 1865, the anger and the hurt and the scars and the wounds left by that bitter conflict did not end. They were too deep and too personal. And so Phillips Brooks took a sabbatical. And he traveled to Palestine, as it was known then. On Christmas Eve, 1865, he found himself in Jerusalem. But the city was so crowded with pilgrims that he decided that he needed to escape. And so he borrowed a horse and he went riding in the desolate countryside that surrounded the city in those days. He spent hours riding alone, thinking. And then around dusk, as the first stars were appearing, he rode into Bethlehem. Back then, Bethlehem was remote, hard to get to, small. And as Brooks rode in that Christmas Eve evening, he was awestruck. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet, and this was what Brooks found to be so overwhelming that night, yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And there's no other way to put it but to say that Christ met Brooks there in Bethlehem that night. As Brooks later described it, Christ brought song back to a broken heart again. Healing places that were bruised and battered in him by the war, the conflict, the hate. And Phillips Brooks went home a renewed man. And it seems to me we all still want to believe that sort of thing can happen to people. Indeed, it's why the crowds went out into the wilderness to hear John the Baptist and to be baptized by him. To be clear, the wilderness was not a convenient place to go, not the kind of place you hang out on vacation, oh, let's get a cabin in the woods, not at all. The wilderness was an awful place to be. And John the Baptist was no slick performer, you know, with his act together, a charismatic preacher, not at all. And yet, according to Luke, crowds of people still went out to the wilderness to hear John the Baptism, Baptist proclaim a message, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Or in other words, what people went out to hear from John the Baptist in the wilderness was a message that no matter what, God was giving everybody another chance to start over again. To be freed from the weight of the past. And to be renewed. And it seems to me we all want to believe that still can happen for people. Even for us. Perhaps. Because unless I miss my bet, I'd guess that almost all of us have been hurt by things in life. And I'd guess that almost all of us carry the wounds of those hurts someplace. And I'd guess that almost all of us want to believe 
that we can be healed of those wounds and renewed. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. Because that's where healing starts. Healing starts inside each and every one of us. Sometimes we think that our lives would be better if something or someone out there changed. We'd be happier, more at peace, more satisfied with our lives if something out there were to change. But the truth is that the pathway to knowing peace and satisfaction and healing and wholeness, that pathway starts inside each one of us, not out there. And what needs to change is not something around us, but what needs to change is inside us, our own way of looking at things. What needs to change is our own hearts. Which is what God promises to do whenever we gather at the table. For anyone who takes the bread and the cup with a believing heart, God promises that in taking that bread and cup and gathering together at the table, God promises that Christ, yes, Christ will meet us here. And Christ will come inside and will renew us and set us free. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
It is wonderful to serve this congregation. Your generosity through a really difficult time has been incredible. Your generosity financially, your generosity and support of our community in the various collections. There's a wealth of gifts out there in the hallway by our sharing tree. And your generosity of support uh, expressed to us in so many ways. If you'd like to give a gift today, uh, there are offering plates at the entrances where you can make a gift. And you can give a gift online by going onto our website and going down to the Give Plus Giving tab and following the instructions there. We are very grateful for your ongoing uh, support of the ministry here at Central Presbyterian Church. Thank you for it, and God bless. We come to celebrate communion, and um, as we do, we remember the invitation that Christ gave. For Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. That is an invitation to be clear to us all. We don't check a membership card. You don't need to be a Presbyterian or a member here at Central to be welcomed at the table of Christ. You simply need to want to come to have Christ's help in your life to live in a new and better way. And so we invite you to come to this, the Lord's Supper, and to share in this time together. Let us come and begin by using the words at the beginning of the great prayer of thanksgiving, the responsive words found printed in the order of service. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O holy God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, with joy we give you thanks and praise. In the words of the prophets, you come to comfort your people and to make a way for us even through the most barren desert. How wonderful are your ways, Almighty God! How marvelous is your name, O Holy One! You alone are God. Therefore, with apostles and prophets and that great cloud of witnesses who live for you beyond all time and space, we lift our hearts in joyful praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We remember before you, Lord, those matters that concern us. We pray for all of those who find themselves this day to be broken in body and mind and spirit. And we pray that you would give to all who are broken a sense of your wholeness, your peace inside. And gracious God, we pray for the, the situations that we know in our families, in our community, across the nation and around the world, situations of conflict. And holy God, we pray that you would empower us to be your agents of reconciliation, speaking your word of peace into places that are troubled. Gracious God, hear us in these moments as we present to you the concerns of our hearts silently. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on the, on the gifts of bread and cup, that in eating 
the bread and drinking the cup, we may know the presence of Christ and be made one with him and one with all who come to this table. Keep us in communion with all the faithful from every time and place until we rejoice together in your eternal realm. And hear us as together we pray as we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so, in a few moments, we'll give you an opportunity to open those uh, communion um, cups that you received uh, when you came in. And if you did not get one, uh, perhaps if you want to raise your hand and we will, a deacon would be happy, okay? Some folks, just keep your hand up and we'll be sure that you get a communion. We will give you the opportunity uh, to open these uh, after the words of institution, so don't feel rushed. There's no rush here. Take your time. Everybody, good. These are the words of the institution of the Lord's Supper as we have them from the Apostle Paul. That which I have received I have also delivered unto you that on the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, after the supper, Jesus took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. All of you drink of it. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So I invite you in these next moments to open the, the get to the bread by peeling back the cellophane or the wafer, and then the cup by peeling back the rest of the way. Take your time and we'll sing a hymn on the other side.
This service of worship has ended and we go from this place to serve God in all that we say, in all that we do, in all who we are. None of us knows what we will face this week. For some there will be great joy and triumph and for others there will be sadness and defeat. But whatever it is that we face this week, we do not face it alone, but we face it all in the strength and the power of the Almighty God who is always near. And now, may the peace of God keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen.